All right, the process of staining MDF wood. Okay. So first things first, I didn't film me staining this because it was my first time uh, doing this on this type of wood, the MDF wood. And I wanted to see how the process turned out. So that way I could talk about it a little bit more uh, in regards to what occurred, what I did, and what I will do. So let me talk to you about what you need when you're going to stain wood. First off, you either need some type of, you need some type of surface that you don't mind getting dirty, all right? Some of the packaging that I get from different packages, that's what I used, it did not seep through. Everything's good to go. And yes, I did do it inside just because that's where my workshop is instead of doing it out in the garage, which is obviously the cars and some other stuff. And obviously you didn't want to do that outside. So I did it in the inside and there's pros and cons to that. And I want to talk to you through all of that. But first, let me talk to you through the process of staining. So first things first, you want to get your pieces together. You want to glue them together first. It is sometimes simpler to, or the belief is, well, go ahead and stain it first and then use the wood glue. The problem with that though is the wood glue won't have glue or wood to adhere to. So the wood glue might not work like it's supposed to if it's stained. With that being said, if you put it together, as I did, as you can see, the inside is not stained. This hasn't been stained yet. The issue with that is you're going to have areas that it might be more difficult to get to. I mean, this one is a pretty simple area. But for example, here, I'm going to block this off so that way the holes are covered. So it comes with its own set of issues. But the process of staining MDF uh, properly is this process. So first things first, you always want to get gloves. All right, I've seen people paint without gloves and it's, you get it on your hands, then you accidentally touch something, whatever the case may be. Just go ahead and get some gloves, easy to do. Second thing is you want to get Minwax pre-stain. If you live in another country or in another, obviously another continent, uh, and they don't sell Minwax, then my recommendation is to get whichever company is the best company in your particular area. And the reason why I say that is, yes, you can go for the cheap stuff, but if you're spending money on equipment and hardware that you want to last a very long time for multiple models to where you can even give it to your kids or grandchildren one day, use the things that are gonna make it last and durable. And in this case, I'm using Minwax Company. And that goes along with paint brushes and things of that nature. So the first things first, you glue it, you build it, you let it set, everything's good to go. For the pre-stain process, again, the pre-stain process, I bought a cheap brush. Because all you're doing is you're just coating the surface and you're letting that pre-stain get in. But you're not putting a lot of pre-stain in it. You're not soaking it through. You just want to cover the area, do what you need to do, and a cheap brush will be fine. That'll work perfectly. All right? Once that dries, and you can let it dry. It says, you know, wipe off the excess in five to... 15 minutes, but you gotta let it dry. So the process that I did was I let it dry for about a few hours. It was probably dry before that, but I let it dry for a few hours. And when I started touching it and the pre-stain wasn't coming up, it wasn't staining a rag or anything of that nature, that's when I started the process of staining. When it comes to staining, you do want to spend money on a good brush. 
So the best brush around my hair is Purdy brushes. You want it to end. You could tell that it's a good brush because one, is going to come with a protective cover. Two, is going to come with very nice soft fibers. All right. And when you're doing this, when you're painting, you didn't want to soak the whole entire thing. All right. From there, you use the Minwax gel stain. All right. Now gel stain is very good, but it's thick. And because it is thick, when you're painting, you just want to dip it in there. As you can see, this comes, you know, where the bottom is like white, pearl, kind of grayish color. So that's all you want to do. And then, because it's so thick, you just want to put it on there for just a little bit, you know. And then as you cover, you put some more, cover some more, and then eventually you're going to cover the entire thing. Once the entire thing is covered, then take and then do your long strokes. MDF doesn't come with a grain. So you could pretty much decide how you want to cover this. So the way I did it was, here's the front. So once I, dived, once I covered everything, then I did the long strokes that way. For this area right here, Once I covered everything, then I did the long strokes this way. So that way everything has kind of like a uniform look to it. All right. Because I'm doing this in the inside, this took about 48 hours to dry. And you can tell whether it's, you know, still drying or dried is because when I took my fingers, it was still sticky. If it's sticky, it's dry. Leave it alone. So when you want to test it out, just test an area that people aren't really going to see. All right. That if you kind of get a fingerprint in there or whatever, you're wearing gloves. But if you kind of make an impression, then it's not going to bother anybody. But 48 hours is what it took to do this because I'm doing it inside where it's 72 degrees inside this room. So about... 22 23 degrees Celsius okay with that being said as you can see this is one coat all right and you can see that in some areas it's lighter and in some areas are darker all right that's because obviously the wood is going to seep in now I know for a fact that this entire set outside inside every single part was coated with pre-stain so here's where people can take one of two roads. They can either leave it alone or they can stain it again. I'm going to choose to stain it again because you kind of have some little bumps and grooves and things of that nature. All right. So I want to paint it. I want to stain it again, not paint it, but stain it again. From there, so after you stain it, and remember, you just want to dab it a little bit, all right? Cover the areas in small, in small parts, then do your long strokes. Once you're done with the gel stain, remember one to two coats is your preference. From there, you want to do the Minwax Fast Dry Polyurethane. Now this is where you're gonna to have to put in a little bit more work. So you're gonna to wanna to have this dried, take your brush, all right? And then you're going to want to cover this entire thing one time. Once it has dried, you're gonna to wanna to take very fine 220 sandpaper. You can also get the Fine blocks of 220. The reason for that is right now the way this sits regardless of whether one coat or two coats is you're gonna have grooves in there so think of like mountain peaks so you're gonna have some areas that are a little bit higher than the others and that's normal that's how it is so you're gonna to wanna to 
fill that in again with the fast dry polyurethane. And you're going to cover that in. That first coat is going to seep into those areas that are low lime and kind of start bringing everything up to where it's nice and even. You're going to have to let it dry. Once you have dried it, this is important. This is where you take your sandpaper, all right, your sandpaper, and very lightly in the direction that you have stained the wood, you want to sand it. So again, whichever way you stain the wood, that's how you want to sand it. You just want to put a light pressure on there, not too deep. This polyurethane is thin anyway, so not too deep. This, but once you start going in there, you can feel that it's biting. Then you can add a second coat. All right. If the reason why you need to apply two, at least two coats is the first coat. Remember, I just said is your is filling up the ridges. So now everything is uniform, but now you want to put that one extra coat. Some people would decide to do three, and that's perfectly fine. But from gel stain to polyurethane, you do not need to sand. From first coat of polyurethane to second coat of polyurethane, you do want to sand, so it has bite. After you sand it, you want to take tack rags, and tack paper, tack rags, and it's, it's a rag that has, you know, uh, sticks stuff to it so when you sand it you're going to have very fine particles and that tack paper that tack rag is going to lift up those particles now once you start doing it over and over and over again and then your tack rag is clean then you know everything is good all right you can use compressed air but the problem with compressed air yes it's going to push it out but remember it's also going to push it up and whatnot if you have a fan in the room or whatever the case may be so tack rag is the best thing to use Coat it once with polyurethane, sand it, coat it again. If you like it, you can stop. If you want to do a third coat, then you're more than welcome to. But between that second and third coat, again, you want to sand it. That's what you want to do. So that's the process. The other thing that you want to think about is, which is, this is where I messed up on. So I bought... This is for the pre-stain. This was a dollar, maybe two dollars. I bought this pretty paintbrush. And this is about a $12 to $14 paintbrush right here. You wanted a flat edge. They do make some that have an angle to it. You'll want, for my particular project, you want flat. Because when you do your long strokes, you want everything to be even. If it was at an angle, things would not be even. So again, everything needs to be even. What happened was, gel stain is oil-based. Alright, so because it is oil-based, I didn't know this. I washed it with warm water and soap. Well, I ruined my paintbrush. Alright, so when you want to clean your paintbrush, after using gel stain or any type of old based paint stain whatever it is first off you always want to hold your brush down never up you do not want the paint nor the solvents to seep into this area right here where the paintbrush is holding the bristles all right The other thing that you want to use is mineral spirits. You can use paint thinner, but I decided to use mineral spirits. This is about $7 at Lowe's, so you can buy it at your local uh, store or whatnot. So let it dry and then with a the rag, just kind of, you know, dry it, dry it as best as you can. And then put it back in its 
protective cover and then let it go from there. Alright, so the other thing that I also bought is I bought this pail. Okay, so that way I can put the mineral spirits in here and then I can dip my brush. I bought some paint pail liners uh, just to kind of help out and go from there for certain types of things. When you're cleaning your brush, you want to use a brush comb so that way you can get inside those bristles. Okay, and then you're just going in there and you're cleaning it off. This part is for a roller, all right? So this is a process to stain the wood. Right now, I'm in the process of going to do my second coat. Then I'm gonna do some smaller pieces. Then I'm going to do the ochre cabinets. And then I'm going to do the ochre portable workshop. Now, here where the paint brushes and some other tools are gonna to go, I'm not going to go in there and paint. So I'm going to just leave that alone and give it a little bit of contrast, all right? But the outside and the inside here and the inside over there, all of that is going to get painted. So that right there is my, for lack of better words, tutorial on how to stain MDF wood, all right, for basic general items, but in this case for my wood modeling workshop and also in the future plastic modeling so i'll see y'all soon